Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Mesa Ridge 376 front bunkhouse fifth wheel. You guys have picked a beautiful unit here. I'm going to walk you around to show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, three slides to think about. Leave plenty of room for them, but most of your awning. you got a big awning that's going to come out. Once you've got that out, see how much room you're going to need to leave yourself room to bring that awning out when you're camping. Now over on our off campsite, I want you to think about where your slides are, but also your power and water connections. Your power cord is gonna plug in back here behind your rear tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle and then your docking station where water is going to be just behind it, behind that. So park accordingly so you can utilize facilities at the campsite. And you can get everything open and closed. Once you arrive, we're going to unhook our hitch. I'm turning this light on in here. This is your auto leveling system from Lippert. Lots of directions here. But the simplest is hold both arrows down at the same time to turn it on. About three seconds, lift it up, and you'll get a green light. This, you can bring up your hitch to get your vehicle out of the way. Once your vehicle's out of the way, all you're going to do is touch auto level. Auto level is going to bring up and down your landing legs, up and down all of your stabilizing jacks, until you hear this beep, and that light will flash. When that's done, you know your unit is level and stable. Once it's level and stable, you can... Tighten these down, these stabilizing strong arms. Just gives you a little more support inside. Make sure they're loosened before bringing up your legs. Once the unit's level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. I got this big, long 50 amp cord. The way these plug in here, this pistol grip, is they come in to the left. Once it's in, turn it to the right, and then turn on this black washer. That'll hold it on. At the end of that 50 amp service, should you need to plug into a 30 at a campsite, you got a dog bone that's going to bring you from 50 down to 30 and if you ever need to plug this into a 110 30 down to 15 amp you can plug into a 110 throw that on there just run appliances accordingly when running off 110 you don't want to pop a bunch of breakers got our power hooked up let's hook up our water now again your docking station power hot water heater docking station they made it real simple here at a campsite This here will show how you're going to set these three settings in order to run off different things. At a campsite, we're going to run city connection. So we want our red to the left, blue down, black to the right, just as they are now. Water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when hooking up here. Hook up your water pressure regulator. Hook up your hose, make sure you set up for city, but don't turn your hose on yet. Just to the left of that is gonna be your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, folks, is making sure our drain plugs in. May have left it out last time you were out camping. Uh, get that back in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn that hose on. Now, if that hose has been on for a little while, you can go inside and deploy your slides because you've already got your unit level and stable. Deploy whatever slides you need to in order to get to your water. 
open up all of your water valves get all the air out of the lines once you get a steady flow of water shut them off and then you're all set to camp now if we're gonna go dry docking we're gonna go a different way now once all the water lines are full you can turn on this hot water heater from indoors now if we're gonna go dry camping we're gonna start with a tank fill everything to the right fill in the same spot make sure your hot water heater is plugged don't leave this when filling this the way to tell when this fresh water connection is full go inside where you check your level of your battery in your black and gray tanks on your control panel hold that fresh water button down that'll tell you when this is full do not leave it when filling it once that's full remove your hose put your cap on and then in order to utilize that fresh water you're going to want to turn on your water pump don't turn on your water pump when you're hooked up city wise that's already got water pressure once you have it on the tank fill after your tank is full you're going to turn it right back to the same setting which is pump and then you'll turn on that water pump there's where you winterize and bypass for that that's where it goes in at you also have a hot and cold shower out here with a spray port right here in your storage that'll connect out here again your fresh and city water connection depending on how you've got it set up two black tank flushes up here is where you hook up your cable and there's some 110 a docking light for arriving at night continue to show you around the rest of the unit our back area black and gray tank dump will be right here again your hot water heater power this is a flue for your furnace if you're running your furnace uh, make sure nothing's ever blocking that and steer clear of it it does get rather warm freshwater tank drain all these will be able to better access low point drain and black and gray tanks better access with this slide closed we'll talk about those when leaving the campsite over here is one side of your pass-through storage again with your auto leveling system this is a battery disconnect this would disconnect all the battery power to the unit that will come important later when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector inside. Also have your propane. Lefty loose to open. That will pull out. Not on this side. I think the other side it pulls out. On the front. That's your big storage area. Prep for solar, you can plug in a solar panel here and that'll trickle charge your batteries. And this side here is your propane that will come out. Simply turn that to the left and pull this towards you. The other side of your pass through storage. These are both access to the back of your fridge for techs. That is a vent for your microwave. Come down the side here, more storage. This panel as well will all access your huge basement storage area. Lighting back here, lots of places to hang things in store. Thousand pound capacity for this storage area. You even have a 110 in here. You have a ladder, utilize it. Go up there a couple times a year, check the caulk around the roof of your se uh, seams of your roof and caulk as needed with a recommended RV roofing caulk. You can also prep for a fear on backup camera a device you can purchase from our store that sits on the dash of your tow vehicle giving you a backup camera for the unit. Accessory hitch and it brings us back around to our off campsite. That about covers everything in here. Let's go take a look on the inside. First thing I like to point out, well, one on these handles here. A lot of people have trouble pulling them. The little trick is just to push under, push above it, and it'll open right up. First thing I like to point out in all units is a fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camped with you knows that the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. To your right immediately as you come in, first panel you come to is your control panel. I will start at the top with your awning. 
You have a carefree awning. Turn it off, turn it on. All you have to do is touch extend and it's gonna run itself out. Automatically, you don't have to touch or hold it. As it runs out, it's gonna run itself just past the very end and then flip itself back over. One is your LED lights. Just roll it back up, and you're all set. Touch retract, and it'll roll itself back in. Throw this, a lot of lighting. ODS, floodlight, porch light. Here's where you can check the levels of your tanks. Level alert will tell you if something's too full. Here's your brand new battery. There's your fresh water. That's your potable water. So black tank, number two it's on right now, showing empty. Make it number one, and it checks it. And then your two gray tanks. Down here's all your slides. We'll utilize those when uh, bringing the slides back in. Here's where you turn on your water pump if you're using potable water. Two different ways to turn on your water heater. Over here, if you're hooked up to gas. On the right, if you're hooked up to electric. Choose correctly. Down below here, we got some one-touch lighting. Touch control panel. Everything that I just did up here, you can do from here. All of your slides, your leveling, and your lighting. More accent lighting. Accent fan. You can hit raise to raise it up. Shut the fan off. And bring it back down. Continuing into your unit now. Self-explanatory microwave. Do you have a light and a high and low exhaust? Cooktop here has a panel light. That's your oven light on the right. Panel light to the left. Now the way you have to do this, you push them to the right, push and light at the same time, and that'll light that. When your gas is turned on, all your controls for your freezer or ice maker here. Controls for the fridge inside. Come around to your right. Before I do, I'll go around the island here. So you do have some accent lighting on the island in the 110. Down here on the side toward your entertainment center is your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention this 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you are out boondocking, dry camping, nothing plugged in charging your battery, or the unit not plugged in, Use that battery disconnect if you're going to be gone for the day to keep this from running your battery down. Continue around the island. Much more to talk about, but your sink. You have a little strainer area here. Entertainment center. Turn your TV on. While I turn it on, I'm going to tell you about the safety strap and hook this up. During travel, you have this strap. There's your TV working. I'll shut that off. You do that, point toward the corner. The other end of the strap is underneath here. Make sure you strap this in for travel. Below that, your sound system. AM, FM, Bluetooth, auxiliary. See if we can pick up anything in this metal building. Uh, dual zoned. Shuts off indoors. Now it's just outdoors. Turn them both back on. Hold that in to shut it off. Fireplace, not just for looks. Uh, I can go through and make, make it brighter or dimmer, but the biggest thing is the heat. So if you're plugged in at a campsite and it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, instead of using your gas to heat it up in here, turn this electric fireplace in on and it'll get it toasty in here in no time. I'm gonna show you quickly how to set your tables up. Here is one. The other one is stored underneath the other end, I'll show you. So you have a table and leg. On these legs, make sure you untwist this all the way to the left to give it a gap. Line that up. If you slot down here. Once it's in, twist it to the right. Once it's twisted to the right, it holds itself. And then simply flip that over onto that. Twist it to the left to remove it. And then you'll store these right underneath your sofa. 
pull this cap out. And then place the cap over that. I'll show you quickly how to set up yourself into a bed. So if we remove your Velcro cushions, three of them. Grab these straps, lift it up and forth yourself, and then simply flip all these over. Push them down in the back, it gives you another bed. Flip these back up. Actually, do this one handed. Grab it. No, I guess you wouldn't. You need both hands so you can bring it up together. And there you go, back to a sofa. Emergency exit windows are clearly marked. You can take this and rip the screen out to get out. A lot of one touch lighting in here. All these are one touch, which is great because you can shut them off except for maybe one at night. Here's your main lighting for over that. Brings us to your thermostat. Turn the air on. You hear that kick on and feel it. Shut the air off. That shuts off rather quickly. So now I'm going to turn the, ace, or the heat on the furnace. Furnace kicks on. Now you'll notice when I shut the furnace off, it takes a few minutes for the furnace fan to cycle through before it shuts off. Let's come up into your front living room or a guest room. Another TV up here, which I'll turn on real quick. You got your big fridge, USB ports underneath there, tons of storage. There's that working. Show you quickly how to turn these sofas into a bed. Remove your back cushions. Find it best to stand in the middle. Gives you good leverage. Bring this up. Hold your legs out. Pull it toward you. Push your back down. Just that quickly. That's a sofa or a sleeping area. Reverse the process. Make sure you put the back up first. You try to lift this up front, up front first. You may break something. Again, bring it up. Bring it down, fold your legs in, and turn your cushions. Both of these will do that. So room for four to sleep up here with a half bath in here, which does have a hand crank open exhaust vent. Oh, there's a fan for that. And lighting. Make sure when you travel, this bedroom door or bathroom door, as well as a few others, are snapped so they're not going to bounce on travel. Continuing on, we'll go to the back bathroom. All the way right here. In here, you have two. One times with GFCI reset, actually three. For travel, make sure that your shower door is snapped closed. Over here you have a light and a fan. Hand crank open exhaust here. Oh, it's on auto off. Continue into your bedroom. You got your big closet. Storage under the bed. Your separate thermostat. Okay, I'm back here. Cut that off. Turn your 
furnace on back here. Again, another bathroom door to snap open. That might be warmer than 75 in here. Let's see if we can get that to come on back here. And that kicked on the same thing, it'll cycle through. That snapped open. Well, it covers everything on the inside. We're gonna shut off a bunch of lights. I'm gonna show you how to close the unit up. We do have one touch lighting underneath the bedroom as well. So what I like to do, start in my bedrooms, shut off my main bedroom light, and then I can see if I have any one touch lighting to shut off. My bathroom lights are off. All light off. Close that bedroom door. And at this point, I will say doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Everything's secure. Nothing is gonna impede your slides from coming in. Make sure all these are tucked in nice. Come up front. Same thing, both sofas need to be up into their reclined positions. Shut off our lighting here. More one touch. Walk around, make sure all your windows are closed. Just secure your unit very well. Now I'm gonna come to my control panel. I can make sure my outdoor lights are off. Instead of using this for my indoor lights, I'm gonna come to here and I'm gonna go to lighting. Security light off. No more lighting on there to shut off. That means all these are gonna be individually shut off. Where is my living room light? Oh, we have the accent light here. And then this kitchen light. Now that I've gotten all my lights off, come back here and just turn on these ones so I can see what I'm doing here. Now, we'll come up here and utilize these slides. Slide number one is gonna be your bedroom slide. I'm gonna run that in. You just don't wanna leave any lights on if you're traveling at night and the lights slept on somewhere. Make it pulled over. They may think someone's inside there. Second one's gonna be your living room. Third will be your right front room. Four and then five. three right side of your front room there I'm gonna continue running these in and I'll continue the video all right so we've got all of our slides in shut off our lights and exit the unit now the biggest thing on these steps is you want to make sure your exterior door is all the way open so that this doesn't catch on it when it comes up you can lift these up with one hand if you need set that inside Turn this either way to lock that in. Lock and deadbolt your exterior door, lift and turn your handle for travel. Set on over to the other side of the trailer. At this point, we're gonna unhook our cable and our water. We're gonna come inside, turn this back on again. And we're just gonna hit retract all. That's gonna bring up all of our stabilizing jacks. Once all of our stabilizing jacks are up, our water was unhooked, we're going to dump some low point drains. Get up underneath there and dump both of those. If you are out dry camping, come on back here. So 
Excuse me, it's actually back up here in front of these tires. There is your freshwater drain to pull. Hook up your hitch and head on up to the dump station. Now, at the dump station park accordingly, you're gonna have two dumps. You're gonna have one in front of your tires and one behind your tires. You do get this 10 foot sewage hose comes your convenience pack. We do sell bigger, longer, stronger ones and you can actually hook up a big T or a Y and plug that in. But we're gonna start up here in the front. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna hook up a sewage hose and we're gonna pull our black tank. Now once it sounds like that black tank's no longer draining, you can go inside and flick up the black tank number one, press the button and tell if it's empty. If it is empty, leave that black handle open. Come on back to our docking station, grab that water pressure regulator and hook up that to your black tank place number one. Turn that on for a good five minutes, let it wash out all that nastiness out of your black tank. When it's done, unhook that hose, go up front, make sure all that washout is done. Once that washout is done, close that black handle and then pull your gray handle. That's gonna be cleaner water, sinks and showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out a little bit for you. If you don't have a big Y, take your sewage hose, unhook it after the gray tank's done, and come on to the back, hook up here, and first thing we're gonna pull back here is your black handle. Again, go inside and make sure it's empty or listen to make sure it's empty. Leave that black handle open, and this time, hook up to black tank number two with your hose at the dump station. Wash that one out for a good five minutes. Once that's done, remove that hose. Make sure all that wash out is gone out of your black tank. Close your black tank, pull your gray handle again. Again, cleaner, wider sinks and showers. That'll clean your sewage hose out for you. Then you can conveniently and sanitarily store your sewage hose right in this sewage hose holder. Again, we thank you guys so much for your purchase. Hope you enjoy this Mesa Ridge for many years to come. Happy camping.